Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on computer, tablet, and phone ergonomics. Now, before we get started today, we are very happy to let you know that today's webinar is sponsored by Ergocentric and their T-Centric Hybrid. Ergocentric is dedicated to designing and manufacturing the best ergonomic seating in the world. And as we will be discussing today, proper ergonomics while using your devices is incredibly important to us here at Cyber Seniors. It's incredibly important to your ongoing health. So before we get started, we have a quick video from Ergocentric and then we'll hop into the lesson. Now, if you want to learn more about Ergocentric, you can check them out after today's session at www.ergocentric.com. That's E-R-G-O-C-E-N-T-R-I-C.com. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about computer, tablet, and phone ergonomics. So what we're going to be covering in this presentation, we're going to talk first about what ergonomics is the importance of computer ergonomics and then how you can incorporate computer ergonomic practices into your everyday life to prevent uh, injury and to prevent uh, discomfort when using computers tablets and phones now let's start off with the definition of ergonomics so uh, According to the International Ergonomics Association, uh, ergonomics is a scientific discipline concerned with the understanding of interactions among humans and other elements of a system and the profession that applies theory, principles, data, and methods to design in order to optimize human well-being and overall system performance. So in short, uh, the interactions between people and their physical and organizational environments, how people interact with their tools. So, why is ergonomics important? Uh, so ergonomics focuses on comfort and efficiency while you are performing tasks. Proper ergonomics can reduce the risk of musculos mus musculoskeletal injuries, uh, otherwise known as MSI, things like sprains and strains, back and neck and shoulder injuries, and just really general discomfort. Uh, and in computer ergonomics specifically, it can also reduce the risk of computer vision syndrome, otherwise known as CVS. Uh, so kind of fatigue or strain of the eyes when looking at screens. Now, uh, we talked a bit about MSI. What is MSI? What are the risk factors for it? So force, exerting too much force on an object, maybe that's uh, typing, uh, pretty aggressively on your keyboard or something like that. Repetition, using the same muscles over and over again with little rest or doing tasks. So you can imagine uh, if you're using your mouse, clicking, clicking, clicking on the same thing over and over again. Work posture, so staying in the same position for a long time. Um, and then also local contact stress. So uh, hard or either otherwise sharp objects coming in contact with the skin uh, if you're sitting at an uncomfortable chair or a desk. Um, and so it's important to consider uh, when the magnitude, frequency, and duration of exposure. So how long we're doing a certain task in a certain position on a certain device um, and stuff like that. Now in computer ergonomics, it's very important to prioritize comfort and practice ergonomics if you're regularly using technology. Uh, it can creep up on you, you may not notice you're in discomfort or in pain until it's a bit too late. So it's important to prioritize this uh, early on. Uh, and we're going to talk about now how you can incorporate computer ergonomics in your day-to-day -day life. So how you can uh, use your devices, sit, in order to reduce injury and discomfort. So first of all, let's start off with proper sitting position. 
So when you're sitting, uh, say, at a desk, at your computer, uh, or with your tablet or otherwise, your head, neck, and torso should be in line with one another. So you should basically uh, imagine that you have a straight line shooting up from uh, your lower back all the way up through your top of your head. And whether that means you're sitting completely upright straight or slightly lean back, uh, regardless, that line should be straight. Your shoulders uh, should be low and relaxed, so not crunching up, not hunching forward, uh, keeping them low and back your elbows close to your body, uh, and your forearms resting on your desk uh, there. And that should create a, a 90 degree angle, as you can kind of see in the image over to the right. And the same goes for your knees. They should also be at a 90 degree uh, angle uh, generally. Uh, your wrist should be straight and aligned with your forearms and your feet resting on the floor or on a platform if your seat happens to be higher. You need to make sure that you're able to make proper contact with your feet to the ground. Uh, now all this to say, if you can look at the image, uh, we're talking about some pretty straight angles here, right? Avoiding hunching, curving of posture generally. Now, uh, how do we kind of accomplish this proper sitting posture? So keeping your joints slightly open, uh, so equal to or more than 90 degrees. You don't want to go uh, smaller than 90 degrees. You can definitely go above it, uh, but not less. Uh, sitting on a chair that has a cushioned seat with a contoured front edge, so kind of a water falling off the front, front edge, that will help uh, support your lower back. Uh, keeping a gap. Uh, the width of about three fingers between the backs of your knees and the front edge of your chair. Again, so you're not kind of getting circulation cutting off there um, by your knee, your chair sticking into the back of your legs. Having your upper arms and lower legs perpendicular to the floor. Uh, so again, that kind of creating that 90 degree angle as much as you can or more uh, from your uh, legs and arms, upper arms to the floor. And having your forearms and thighs parallel to the floor. So right, talking about those angles again. Now, here are some things that you want to avoid uh, with proper sitting posture. So obviously avoid bending or tilting forward or to the side, leaning on one elbow or the other, uh, leaning forward onto your desk. So that includes not slouching. Uh, that would be bending and tilting. Uh, also don't sit for longer than 15 minutes. Uh, you have to take breaks. Uh, even if you're sitting properly, uh, there still can be strain um, when we're doing something uh, for a long period of time uh, without any sort of change or rest. Uh, don't have your arms raised um, of, above, and that will also help you not bend your wrist. So if your arms are raised, your wrists might have to kind of bend down to reach a keyboard or a mouse. So uh, arms not raised, lying flat on the desk or whatever surface you're working on. Uh, don't bend your wrists. Uh, and do not cram your thighs under the desk. So if there's not enough room for your legs to fit under the desk, maybe consider um, making some adjustments to fix that. Uh, and don't sit on a chair with poor support. Um, so a proper uh, office chair is great. If you don't happen to have one, creating support by using pillows uh, in your lumbar area, so your lower back. Now, Let's talk about setting up the desk area itself uh, in order to facilitate the best uh, ergonomics and seating position. So you should position your computer screen so it's within your line of sight. We can see this little image over to the right. Um, so not too high so that you're looking up, craning your neck, not too low so you have to hunch over. Uh, it should be basically right across, if not slightly down, uh, in your eye line uh, so that you don't have to adjust your head. You can simply just adjust your eyes uh, to look at the screen properly. Keeping your mouse and other materials within reach, so your phone, water bottles, chargers, writing materials, all of that, so it's minimal, minimal effort. You don't have to reach over to make a note. Uh, you can kind of keep that steady, uh, proper position. And making sure there is enough space under your desk for your legs to fit. So we talked about that already. So if you're finding your legs are cramped, uh, making some adjustments to fix that, whether it's pulling your desk out further from the wall or, or whatever it may be. Now, it's also important to talk about vision. Um, now, with ergonomics, vision 
will go along with how you're sitting as well. So if you can't see properly, you'll maybe tend to hunch forward. Um, and you know, if you tend to hunch forward, you might be too close to the screen and strain your eyes. So it's kind of a, a chicken and the egg situation here with vision. So to protect vision, put your computer screen obviously close enough so you can read the text comfortably without leaning forward and position your screen so that there are no reflections or outdoor light that appear on it that may cause you to have to you know, strain your eyes in order to focus in and see clearly. So um, trying to avoid light directly on the screen. Uh, you can also do uh, adjust your computer's brightness and font size. You know, If you need to put your computer a bit further back in order to facilitate your seating position, then you might consider going into your computer's accessibility settings to change brightness and font size so that you don't have to lean forward. And you should be blinking fully and frequently to reduce your risk of dry eyes. And we also have a previous webinar on reducing eye strain, uh, which I can link below uh, in the description. So to review kind of what we went over, and this image to the right is the perfect kind of um, diagram of this. So definitely something to keep in mind when you're setting up your desk. This is uh, kind of how you want it to look. So your monitor adjusted to distance and height the top of the monitor should be slightly tilted so you can have that either forward or slightly downward glance at it, not looking up or too far down so you have to crane your neck or hunch. Arms, uh, your sh relax your shoulders, forearms, uh, they should be parallel to the floor, your forearms, minimal bends in the wrist. As you can see, we have a pretty flat wrist all the way across to the keyboard on this image on the right. Your chair should have a backrest, armrests if possible, and it should be adjusted to height so that you can have your feet planted firmly on the floor. Your legs, your thighs should be parallel to the floor, your lower legs perpendicular, and your feet, again, should be parallel to the floor and use a footrest if necessary. If your chair isn't adjustable in height and your feet aren't touching the floor, uh, then you should, uh, you know, get a footrest, maybe put a, a, a large book under your feet so that you can have um, them firmly planted. Uh, for your head, your head and neck should be balanced and in line with your torso. So again, straight lines. And again, considering, uh, you know, if you want to switch position, we don't want to stay in one position for more than maybe 50 minutes. If you can adjust yourself so you can stand is another great option uh, for creating uh, healthier posture and ergonomics. Uh, your elbows uh, should be close to the body and bent between 90 and 120 degrees. Your monitor just below eye level, so you don't need to bend your neck. Your forearms uh, and your wrists and hands are in a straight line, approximately parallel. So a lot of the same things we're talking about when we're talking about standing, um, creating those kind of angles, uh, 90 to 120, generally straight lines uh, through the torso. Now, when we're talking about tablet and phone ergonomics, it's gonna be slightly different. Uh, what we were just talking about mostly applies to when you have a keyboard and a mouse and you're using a traditional computer or laptop. But when you're using a tablet or a phone, you should, uh, and a couple notes or things to note uh, and to pay attention to. Avoid holding your tablet or, or phone in your lap. Obviously, you can get away with your tablet being propped up on cross legs for maybe a couple minutes at a time, but any longer you're going to be causing strain to yourself and your neck and your back and your eyes. So avoid doing so. And if you can, get a stand. So if you're going to be using your device for longer periods and you won't be able to hold your device up, so that's at an optimal eye level um, and it's going to start to fatigue your arms, uh, you should get some sort of stand. Uh, so that you can have it sitting um, and you don't have to hold it up. Uh, another thing actually to mention with getting a stand, if you do happen to be say sitting on a couch, you can use pillows as well to prop up your device to make it uh, more optimal. Another thing to consider is to avoid touchscreen typing. Again, if you're planning on using your tablet or phone for longer periods and you're doing a lot of typing, you should consider an external keyboard. Uh, there's really no way to keep your eyes and forearms in an optimal position when you're tap typing directly onto a tablet or phone screen. So consider this. If you're using typing minimally, this may not be necessary, uh, but if you're writing long emails on your tablet, 
definitely consider a keyboard because those wrists will get fatigued pretty quickly and strained. And same with the computer, uh, same here with the tablet and phone, especially because sometimes our phones and tablets tend to have a bit more glare. Uh, beware of the glare. Many tablets and phones have those glossier displays, uh, and this can determine how we position ourselves in order to avoid a glare. So find a good spot with no glare, or you can use an anti-glare screen protector uh, that should minimize that effect. Now here uh, to our right is an example of some poor tablet posture, kind of just reiterating some of the things we just went through. Uh, so as we can see, when you can, you should always make an effort to keep your device high enough to avoid hunching. Uh, however, this can become fatiguing, so we may need to come up with other uh, solutions to solving this. We can't necessarily hold our arms up high for particularly long without getting tired. Um, and so uh, raising it up, as I said, if you're sitting on a couch or a chair, uh, you know, if you can have a stand, that's great. Otherwise, you can use things like books or pillows to help prop up your device to the right height uh, to get that uh, proper um, positioning with your uh, eyes. And even if you're lying down, sometimes we may be using our devices in bed or lying down on a couch. Um, and it's always best to prop yourself uh, so it's always prop your device up rather than yourself. So they, though it may feel okay for some periods of time to prop yourself up, it's always better to adjust your device than to adjust yourself. So as we can see in this example, rather than craning your neck forward by adding more pillows, uh, use a stand or a pillow on your stomach to raise up your device so you can keep your body in line. You shouldn't be compromising your positioning to be able to see and use your device. You should change your device positioning to accommodate you. Now, uh, there's a lot of products that can help better our general computer ergonomics. So things like a mouse, uh, a proper work chair with back support, foot rests, computer stands. Um, so let's talk a bit about some of these. So any mouse uh, that you use really will take off strain from your wrist caused by using a trackpad, which can be quite straining, the repetitive motion we might sometimes have to use with that. Some mouses are relatively flat, but there are ergonomic mouses that hold your hands in a more natural resting position, as we can see with the mouse to the right. Uh, this angle style can reduce wrist strain even more, uh, but again, any simple mouse will help uh, with wrist strain. Uh, so you don't have to go all out and buy an expensive ergonomic mouse. You can buy a simple one. Um, just kind of just using the trackpad less is always going to help you. As for chairs, a good ergonomic chair should provide uh, the following features. Adjustable features to fit your body, so height, back rests, arm rests, uh, proper depth and height so your legs aren't hanging or jutting off the seat and not being supported good lumbar support, so that support in your kind of lower back, uh, and arm rests that you can put your arms on to keep that um, flat line from your uh, forearm all the way through to your wrists and hands. As for stands, laptop and tablet stands are a great, great way to compensate for the low angle. Sometimes with uh, desktop computers, they're usually a bit higher and we don't have to worry about this, but laptops and tablets obviously sitting flatter on any sort of surface we're working on. So um, if you're using a stand, uh, offer one that angles your keyboard. If you're using a stand that, that angles your keyboard up like the one to the right does, you may also want to make use of an external keyboard because how this keyboard is now angled is going to cause you strain. So um, something to consider there. Uh, but there's also a lot of things we can do, uh, kind of DIY hacks to make our uh, set up a bit more ergonomic. Doing things like stacking books to make your laptop or computer or tablet sit higher or leaning your tablet on a, on a stack of books rather than using a stand. Doing things like using an ironing board or standing at your kitchen counter to create a makeshift uh, standing desk. Uh, using pillows if you're on a bed or a couch to raise up your device and create additional support and turning on more lights to reduce eye strain. So some things to consider doing if you're finding that some of the things we've already discussed are affecting you, but you're not quite ready to, or uh, don't have the means to um, you know, buy all the, the fancy ergonomic products that we've kind of talked about, mouses, stands, and all that. 
And the most important kind of thing in all of this is to take breaks. We are not meant to be sitting or you know standing in a singular position for long periods of time. Uh, so take frequent breaks, maybe every 20 to 30 minutes, stand up, move away from your devices, walk around a little, stretch your arms, your back. Don't forget about your eyes. Let your eyes relax their focus. Uh, you can do this by looking at something that's at least about 20 feet away uh, and just looking at different things of different distances to adjust your eyes uh, back to normal. Uh, and maybe do another activity, maybe a snack, drink some tea, write or doodle, read a book, talk to someone, uh, whatever it is, just take breaks uh, away from sitting in the same position over and over again. It's definitely uh, one of the key things uh, our bodies, again, are meant to be stagnant, they're meant to be moving around, so make sure that you remember to do that. All right, thank you for listening, and if you'd like to learn more about this lesson uh, with a Cyber Seniors mentor, you can go to cyberseniors.org or call us at 1-844-217-3057. To register for a one on one phone session. Uh, and we also host weekly tech drop in sessions, uh, two to three Eastern Time on Tuesdays for anyone who uh, wants to join. That's on Zoom. And once again, today's webinar was proudly sponsored by Ergocentric.